amazing 40-man raids, challenging leveling content, better community. These are some of the things that people say made WoW Vanilla so great. So great, in fact, that I made a video about why WoW Vanilla was so amazing. Still though, WoW Vanilla was not exactly perfect and it definitely had its flaws. So today I'm going to talk about the things I didn't like about World of Warcraft Vanilla. Let's dive right into it with number one. Certain specs that weren't viable. If you would make a character in World of Warcraft today, you could choose any class and spec combination and you would be able to join a guild and raid without a problem. Back in vanilla though, things were quite different. Every class that had a healer spec was almost always forced to go healer. Think of priests, druids, paladins and shamans. If you were one of those classes and you didn't spec as a healer, you could not get into raids let alone an end game raiding guild. Luckily, nowadays people see the utility of having a Shadow Priest or a Balanced Druid in raids on Vanilla WoW private servers, but back then you were shit out of luck. So basically if you were a Druid, for instance, and you wanted to raid, then 2 out of 3 of all available specs were useless. What a great idea that was. Let's force people to play a spec they don't want to play, but give them no other option. Classes with a healer spec weren't the only ones who got screwed over. Back in vanilla you had raids such as Molten Core and the mobs in Molten Core were resistant to fire damage, which to be fair makes sense, but it meant that as a mage you were forced to go Frost or Arcane Frost. All other options such as Full Fire or Arcane Fire were completely useless. Yeah, told you while vanilla wasn't perfect. Number 2. The Weird Items There were many items in WoW Vanilla that just left me scratching my head in confusion. Leather items clearly aimed towards rogues and feral druids that had spirit, the dungeon sets for clothies that didn't have any spell damage, spell crit or spell hit, the weird set bonuses that were sometimes completely useless. There's actually so much wrong with the gear in WoW Vanilla that I decided to make a separate video about that altogether, so stay tuned for that. Speaking of gear, let's move on to number 3, the loot that dropped in raids. Now, when Blizzard released Zul Group, they decided to make the bosses drop tokens rather than the actual items. These tokens could be used by multiple classes, thus limiting the chance of items dropping and then no one actually needing it. It was a great idea from Blizzard. It's just too bad that they didn't come up with that earlier because in raids such as Molten Core and Blackwing Lair, this wasn't the case. Yeah, in those raids you had the actual tier items dropping, which resulted in all kinds of problems. First of all, you had Paladin gear dropping for the Horde faction and Shaman gear dropping for the Alliance faction. And remember, this was back when the Horde didn't have Paladins and the Alliance didn't have Shamans. So imagine this. You're in a Horde guild with your level 60 Druid and you're in Blackwing Lair. You got to Chromagus with your raid and after many tries your guild finally kills that nasty ass dog. Everyone rushes over to the corpse anxious to see what gear it dropped. Did it drop the tier 2 Storm Raid shoulders that your Druid wants? Oh wait, no. It dropped the Judgment Shoulders. Does anyone need those? Oh yeah, that's right. We're Horde, we don't have Paladins. Guess we'll just have to disenchant this shiny new loot right away and come back next week and pray we get some loot that someone actually needs. Second of all, the raids were all 40 men apart from Zulgroup and the Ruins of Ankiraj. So those few items that dropped from each boss had to be distributed over 40 people. How do you like that? First of all, we have actual items dropping instead of tokens, so there's a bigger chance of useless crap dropping. And then when gear you actually need drops, you have to roll against more people compared to a 10-man raid for this instance. And then when gear you actually need drops, you have to roll against more people compared to a 10-man raid for instance. Yeah, how would you like to roll against 7 other warriors in your raid that need that one item as well? Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Moving on to number 4, long ass corpse runs. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Dying in the middle of Stranglethorn Vale and then realizing the only two graveyards for the Horde at least are at the very top or the very bottom and then realizing you have to run back to your corpse for 6 minutes. Remember dying in Stromgard Keep in Arathi and having to walk back to your corpse? How about the fact when you died in Maraudon? You spawned outside the instance at a graveyard far to the north of Maraudon and you had to backtrack your entire way through that place just to get to the beginning of the dungeon. I still remember getting completely lost when I tried to corpse run to that instance and eventually just giving up and getting the rest sickness. 
I've said before that some of the convenience of today's World of Warcraft makes things a little too easy, but this was one of those things that I never liked about WoW Vanilla. It really felt like someone just paused the game for 6 minutes and you could do nothing else but run. And number 5, the fact that there were just not enough quests. Now, don't get me wrong, some people argue that grinding for experience is part of the whole MMO experience and looking at similar games at that time, I would say that that is a fair argument. However, it doesn't change the fact that it was still very annoying. I can't tell you how many times I did the quest in an area and then realized I needed two more levels to continue to the next one. Remember Stranglethorn Vale? A zone that started at level 30 with the Mastery quest and ended at level 45-ish with the Bloodsail Buccaneers quest in Booty Bay. That's right, this zone covered 15 levels and it didn't have nearly enough quests to cover all those levels, which meant you eventually ran into the NPC with the grey exclamation point. An NPC that had a quest for you, but you were not high enough level to get that quest from him. So you backtracked to other zones such as Dutch Wall of Mars, Tenaris, and when you came back, guess what? It's still grey. Fuck you, grey quest giver. Oh, and when you finally did manage to get that quest, it was a quest that was 8 levels above your current level, so you couldn't do it anyway. What a great design choice by Blizzard. So there you have it. These are the things I don't like about WoW Vanilla. Despite all these things, I still love that era of World of Warcraft, and I have many fond memories of those times. But I realized that no game is absolutely perfect, and WoW Vanilla was definitely not the exception. Alright guys, that's it for now. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamsu, and have a good one.